Recall that almost all cells carry out glycolysis in order to generate ATP as an energy source. However, only liver is capable of regenerating glucose from pyruvate, a process known as gluconeogenesis. In this video, we're going to look at two cycles that transport derivatives of pyruvate back into liver for gluconeogenesis to resupply glucose for muscle cells. The Cori cycle is also known as glucose lactate cycle. It occurs during anaerobic or low oxygen conditions, such as during intense exercise. When skeletal muscles are depleted of oxygen, glycolysis becomes the main pathway to generate ATP as energy source. Pyruvate is reduced to lactate by lactate dehydrogenase in order to regenerate NAD plus required for glycolysis to continue. This process is known as fermentation. The lactate generated by muscle cell is transported to the liver, where it is oxidized back into pyruvate by lactate dehydrogenase. Pyruvate then enters mitochondria and it is converted to oxaloacetate by pyruvate carboxylase, which is coupled to ATP hydrolysis and uses biotin as a cofactor. Within mitochondria, oxaloacetate undergoes phosphorylation with GTP as the phosphoryl group donor and a subsequent decarboxylation by mitochondrial phosphoenolpyruvate carboxykinase. The product phosphoenolpyruvate exits mitochondria and is reconverted back into glucose by gluconeogenesis in the cytosol of liver. The glucose is then transferred back into muscle cells for fuel source. To sum up, the Cori cycle transfers lactate generated from lactate dehydrogenase during intense exercise back into the liver, where it is reconverted back into glucose by gluconeogenesis, and the glucose is transported back to muscle cells. The Cahill cycle or glucose alanine cycle is involved in transporting amino groups to liver in a non-toxic form. During starvation, muscles degrade amino acids for fuel. Amino groups are collected in the form of glutamate by transamination. Glutamate then transfers its alpha amino group to pyruvate by alanine amino transferase. The alanine form passes into the blood and travels to the liver. In the cytosol of liver cells, alanine amino transferase transfer the amino group from alanine to alpha ketoglutarate, forming pyruvate and glutamate. The ammonia from glutamate is excreted by the urea cycle. Pyruvate enters the mitochondria and is converted to oxaloacetate by pyruvate carboxylase, similar to the Cori cycle. However, within mitochondria, oxaloacetate is converted to malate by mitochondrial malate dehydrogenase, coupled to the oxidation of NADH. Malate then exits mitochondria and is reconverted back into oxaloacetate by cytosolic malate dehydrogenase. Oxaloacetate is then phosphorylated and decarboxylated by cytosolic phosphoenolpyruvate carboxykinase, producing phosphoenolpyruvate, which is reconverted back to glucose by gluconeogenesis. Glucose is then transferred back into muscle cells through the bloodstream. In summary, the purpose of Cori cycle is to recycle lactate generated from anaerobic fermentation during intense exercise. While the purpose of Kale cycle is to transfer the amino group from degradation of amino acids in the muscle cells back to the liver where it is excreted through the urea cycle. In both cycles, the liver carry out gluconeogenesis. However, they slightly differ by the first few steps of gluconeogenesis. The Cori cycle involves mitochondrial phosphoenolpyruvate carboxykinase to convert oxaloacetate to phosphoenolpyruvate. But during Kale cycle, Oxaloacetate is first converted to malate in mitochondria and reconverted back into oxaloacetate by malate dehydrogenase. Oxaloacetate is converted to phosphoenolpyruvate by the cytosolic phosphoenolpyruvate carboxykinase. In both cycles, the glucose generated by gluconeogenesis is transferred back to muscle cells.